waiting for this thing. So this is Ben from Armstrong Fitness <laughs> and Rob from Intrigue. Um, we're doing a bit of a role reversal today. I think Ben, you're you're interviewing me, right? Yes. And I've, so you've been doing this with some people. Maybe you could give us a heads up of what you're yeah. up to. So I hired Carly with Intrigue to help me with some business coaching stuff that. Um, you know, John Maxwell's Law of the Lid. I'm probably the limiting thing in the company, so I'm trying to address that. Sure. And if I'm not, it's not going to hurt. And she's got me doing this little experiment where I'm trying to meet people who define success differently than the, like, Gary Vaynerchuk, hashtag hustle, never see your kids or family, and just, like, work until you die. Um, well, yeah, well, however you want to put it, right? Um, and I'm not opposed to hard work. Being a business owner, you can't be. Um... But, like, I had a lot of guilt that if I wasn't, like, at work or thinking about work or accessible by email, like, you know, all times other than sleeping, that, like, I felt shitty. Right. And that sucks, and that's not how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to work for freedom. At least that's what they say. So Carly's got me doing this little experiment where I'm chatting with other people to learn about, like, you know, the road they've traveled and their version of success and, like, basically expose myself to people who aren't. <laughs> 25 single males who work on the internet. <laughs> <'Cause> that's, <laughs> right? That's all they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. And you guys, your guys' values connect well with me. Yeah. Um, and I'm always like, oh, damn, they do that thing well. So, um, I don't know. This is, I think, number f number three or number four that I've done in the last, like, four weeks. Cool. That's so I don't awesome. Have a, I don't have a strong script for it. It's mostly just, like, a, kind of a discussion about... How all that works. That fits well for this road because that's how this one rolls all the time. So hit me up. What, what, what do you want to talk about? Um, so the biggest one is like, how did you get started with, you know, where the path that has led you to where you guys are now? Um, and what are some of like the wins and less wins, learning opportunities that you found along the way that if like, you know, the times when you're like, man, I could easily quit, but like, what kept you going? Yeah, okay, that's cool. And so there's kind of two questions there. The first one is kind of what did we do to get us started on the path to the, where we are today? Yeah. And then what kind of things did we keep in mind or go through when things were tough to keep us moving? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the first one is a bit of a shitty answer because you mentioned this idea that you don't want to talk to single 25-year-olds who work on the internet all day. And when I was 25, I was single and I was working on the internet all day long. <laughs> uh, well, that's not totally true. Um, and again, it's kind of a shitty response because Paul and I hustled. Like, legitimately, we we beat pavement for, you know, years. And yeah. we, we, we literally knocked on the door of every single business in downtown Guelph including the shady ones and there's a there was a couple <laughs> they're not there anymore health spa my butt it was not a health spa <laughs> uh, maybe it's healthy for somebody but um, I, I thought it was like not what it was anyway so we, we hustled that was a huge huge part of I think what made us get to where we are because a lot of people had great ideas but nobody was out talking to people about them right to see if they buy them and we just hustled like we literally we knocked on every door we phoned every business we, we used Google Maps uh, satellite view to look at where there was commercial complexes and then we drive there and knock on every single door so I, I don't want to give the impression that like I'm opposed to that because for the first while I worked seven days a week 14 right. hours a day but it's now that especially like I mean the camera doesn't know you know that uh, you know having Liam when I was partway through school unexpected at 22 like I am 27 trying to balance the hustle and family life and until honestly really recently um, family has been the second right. and that feels that feels shitty right so that the fact that you like have kids now like my plan was work my ass off for 10 years then have kids when I'm like kind of established and that was my plan I just happened to have the kids a little bit later oh so um, now I'm in a bit of I'm in a very privileged position in terms of having a fantastic team um, and, and an environment where we all have each other's back. And we've really had some great successes with not only the way we recruit people, but the culture we've developed and the way that the team that's there like encourages and fosters the culture on its own, like on their own. So my... Because I used to do the same thing. I, I'd work seven days. Like, Paul and I, we didn't have vacations for three years. We constantly... Yeah. We, we would dress up in business attire and go to work on Saturday, not meeting anybody, but just because it helped us be more efficient and more effective in the way that we <laughs> thought. Awesome. Yeah, you guys. and it's the truth. We would come in in jogging pants and, like, you know, just lazy, and we'd start late, and we'd 
be distracted and then we're like, you know what, man, maybe we should just need to dress up and like look the part and then we'll go and it worked. It, it just kind of got us in the right mindset. So, but that was like the first, you know, three, four or five years of just, you know, constantly like no summers, no weekends, just yeah. working our butts off, making no money. But I think the biggest thing we did then that helped us build a business. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of people, um, sometimes not misinterpret, but don't necessarily label properly is there's a big difference between being self-employed and building a business. And you laugh. Yeah. So why is that? Well, you want to build a job or you want to build a business? Yeah, exactly. Right. So we, we were, um, kind of blessed and cursed way back when, when we read the email. It was right. our, it was as if it's a crazy dude, Bill, Bill Luffy. If you're out there, I love you, buddy. You're crazy, <laughs> but he introduced us to this e-myth book and just the idea of reading for business. And um, so we read this book, and at like I was like, oh shit, I don't know anything. <laughs> like, you know, we're, we were totally just kind of winging it, and we were making no money, and we had no pressure. We were in school part time working, did this on the side. Um, but uh, the the thing that kind of stuck out to me in that book was the theme of systems and building systems that can be run without you. And then we made a very important decision in our second year of business, which was to enroll in a formalized sales training school. Oh. And uh, we were both making $600 a month each, eating like really crappy food and like <laughs> trying to like... The type of food you can afford at $600 a month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, you know, going to places where our friends worked at restaurants to see if we could get hooked up and like, you know, really going out of our way to, <laughs> to get free food where we could. And, <laughs> Um, and we both enrolled in a course that was ten thousand dollars each. So essentially, we we just said, okay, well, we're not going to pay ourselves. We're going to invest in sales because in school, when we went to university, there was no there was no formalized training on how to do sales, and we realized that sales was the lifeblood of our business. <laughs> yeah. If people don't buy it, then there's nothing to happen. And I think at the beginning of business, sales is the most important. And then as you get a bit more established and you have a client base, then I think operations and customer service become the most important like but at the beginning we had to really focus on sales so we, we invested like crazy into the sales system and that allowed us to build a system of sales and hire people and bring them on the team that could run the system which was predictable right if you used you know if you did the right behavior with the technique we trained over time you have predictable success and we could reverse engineer how many calls someone had to make, how many phone calls, or how many conversations they could have to have, how many meetings, how many deals would close, and what their target was for the year, and how much they wanted to make personally. And we just reverse engineered that goal into essentially phone calls. Because that's like the lowest common denominator that you can actually control. 100%. Like that. So we also do networking events and requests to speak. Like now our, 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 our high leverage activities are requests for introductions from our A clients to other A clients, um, oh. attend networking events, uh, uh, provide delightful client moments, which we log and that kind of stuff, and request to speak so we can get on stage and, and do talks. Cool. But the, the first part of the answer to the, que the first question, the first answer to the question is we hustled. <laughs> and we did. We knocked on doors like crazy. We didn't have vacations. We just worked to the bone. Yeah. And then the second one is we invested in training and systems and sales systems so we could like repeat the success and then documented the shit out of it. Yes, I, I like that. I had a business coach who I worked with for over a year. Tom, if you watch this, you're the man. Yeah, Tom. Uh, he got me to just like process, process, process. I'm like, Tom, this is so like effing tedious. And he's like, you got to have it. And now everything is a live working document that anyone who does the process, like there's only five of us, has access to and they can edit it and like just to document everything. And it's been like, there's stuff I'm like, we should look at that thing. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I wrote that down. And awesome. at the time you were like, I didn't realize this would be as important as it is. Cool. So I like that. So yeah, and it's, the hustle is, it's interesting because I like like one of the questions me and Carly have talked about, like say you hit your freedom number, you make, you know, not $20 bazillion dollars where you buy like helicopters made out of gold, but like. <laughs> that'd, be or, a, that'd be a heavy helicopter. Or, yeah, whatever, it's probably extra expensive. <laughs> um, but like you make, you're happy and you have room for vacation, you have time for vacation, like what else are you gonna do? You never have to work again. Like I would still go to work because like I enjoy it. Yeah, I'd probably do things a bit differently, but like, I didn't, like, what else are you gonna do? 
Like, you can only sit on the beach and drink fancy drinks out of pineapples for so long. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's like four days. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, I gotta go do something. Yeah, I wanna, like, let's do a project. Yeah, big time. Um, so I like that it's hard, it's hard to find that balance, so it's, and especially that we're a few years in business, but now 10 years in fitness. And in university, it was like, work part-time, run my own business, have a kid, and that was a seven-day cycle. Like, our, it sounds really bad. Our last vacation, aside from New York, which was three days, and I worked for two of them, was me and Caddy went to Cuba for an all-inclusive. <laughs> and that was six years ago, because that's where Liam was conceived. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the last time Big I had a vacation. Big shout-out to Cuba! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll see you in five years when we want another kid. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, you want to work super hard, but now it's like, when I take that step back from work, I don't want to feel like, I don't want to feel guilty that I'm not with clients right now. Right. So what are some of the like, I don't know, the times when you're like, man, like, this is really hard. Like the learning opportunities, however you want to view it. It's happened, man. Like the biggest things for us was, you know, maybe five, six years ago when we would look at our financials and we'd be like, you know, we're going to have a tough time hitting payroll next Friday. And we would literally be, you know, six business days out. And at that point, we would not be moving payroll, which means, like, we, we didn't care about not getting paid ourselves. Like, we would just deal with not getting paid. But right. our team, like, you can't miss payroll. Like, it's just that <laughs> you, your team will leave immediately if you miss payroll. And so five, six years ago, when this was kind of like an issue, it was super stressful. And, like, knots in your stomach, can't sleep, you know, worried, like, straight up worried, stressed out. Um, and it was like, why, you know, why bother continue this stuff? Like, why be so stressed? Why not quit? Like, I mean, I could easily go get a sweet job that has good benefits and decent vacation and I do really well for myself. Right. Um, Paul's in the same boat. So then it was kind of what you were saying before. It was like, well, if we don't lean through this, then we're not going to have the opportunity to spend six weeks off in the hospital and at home because you know I had babies that were eight, eight weeks early and I was able to be with my you know partner in life the whole time um, because there wasn't pressure for me to be at work so like getting seeing that kind of end before while it's tough I think that's the biggest thing is really understanding you know where it is you want to take this thing right so that way when it does get tough you remind yourself of well a where you want to go and and then b which has been a huge one for us is why you're doing it and so right you know, my, my whole thing since I've been, whatever, a late teen has been this idea of like, take action and, and every change starts with one person because if it doesn't start with one person, it's never going to happen. And this idea that we live in a world of a whole bunch of people that are waiting around for something to happen yeah. and somebody else to do it when in reality we need to make the change we really want. As much as it's cliche to say, it's not cliche to do. And like that. We, we identified that as a company, our, our purpose is to empower leaders and strengthen communities. And so, you know, when we see this traction we're getting with our clients and the way that it's impacting their business and their life and their family, and we see that, you know, more people are giving back and people are happier in the entire ecosystem that exists around our clients' jobs and, and businesses, we had a tough day, whatever. We just push yeah. through it because it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. And that so that's, this is this is actually a nice segue into one of my other. My, those are my only. This that was one question. This is my only other question. That's script, <laughs> kind of scripted. Okay. Um, is like how people define their version of success because I know it's hard to explain. I don't want to make it sound like I don't love what I do because I know I'm. I know I want to go north and I know we're going generally north and north feels good and I love everything about it and every day I'm at work I'm like even if it's a crappy day I'm like man I really enjoyed being with clients all morning like yeah. that was fun Yeah. Um, and I know that's a technician job from the e-myth like the training of the clients is not the visionary job I'm just like I think it's fun I want to keep doing it and what's wrong with that yeah like being <laughs> conscious of that decision I think is really important yes that's a good point thank you um, but one of the things Carly's helping me with is like at what point do we go so far north that we're now going south on the other side of the globe we don't know where that like that vision is and she's been helping me build that and it's like I know we're going well and staff are happy and we do cool things for clients and like I feel good about the work we're doing but we don't have that like I don't know what I don't have a vision board so to speak so I wanted to ask like personally um, like how do you define success is it time is it money is it freedom is it team is it you know I know you've got thousand leaders thousand communities so yeah like empower, that, or, empower leaders in a thousand communities but what, how do you do things like personally where you're like man I 
not like I've made it because then you feel like it ends but like how do you define your version of success yeah I mean I'm a goal setter and goal accomplisher so my version of success is the idea of putting things out there that I want to make happen in my life and then making it happen and then doing it again and doing it again and doing it again you have ask anybody that rides a Harley Davidson it's not the destination it's the journey like straight up and I think one of the coolest things that we've decided to focus on as a company is this idea of empowering leaders in a thousand communities, which is essentially, if we want to be in, and this is an arbitrary number, communities of 90,000 or more, uh, to be in a thousand of them, we're going to have to be in Canada, US, Great Britain, and Australia as a starting point to get close to that number. Right. So we're going international with this business, and it's going to take us a long time to get there. So like the success is going to be like a huge party when we get to that <laughs> thousandth community, and then we're going to have to figure out what to do next. But it's such a far stretch goal that I think it's gonna keep us all going and then we get to celebrate the little wins on the way. Personally, like I got little things right now on my list of like, I, uh, I have a goal to do 10 chin ups and right now I'm at six, so I'm like making progress. That's good. I'm getting there, yeah, I'm getting there. And you're not like, from a fitness standpoint, you're not a small human, like you have no, no, I you got, to do a chin up, it's harder than me to do a chin up. Yeah, that's probably fair. And then that which was also part of my other goal is to get down to 230 pounds for my birthday and I'm at 235, so I've, I've lost 10 pounds at the beginning of the year, which is good. When's your birthday? June 16th. Oh, you're doing so great. I'm, I'm on track. Ski season just started and I've got a goal to make um, Meg, Megan's dad look bad on skis, which is impossible because he's stupid good. I don't think I'll ever be as good as he is, but it's still something to kind of strive for. And um, I, I've got a goal to touch my toes without having to stretch to do it. And so I'm really close to making that happen right now, and that's really cool. And then, you know, I've got other goals in terms of like hanging out with my kids and like taking hunter skiing. And right now, I don't have too many goals with my twins because they're seven months old and they're just getting out of the blob stage of life and they're turning into some humans so but I mean those little things that just kind of keep me going right and, and success for me is freedom period it's not time and money it's kind of both this idea of being able to take some time when I need some time um, to travel where I want to travel and to be able to do some of the things that I want to be able to do but I'm not caught up in like I need the best stuff or you know like right. I mean I, I bought a Subaru with like I could have, I could have had a BMW or a Mercedes or I don't know, whatever. What's up? Another nice car that's stupid expensive and you know, yeah, you got too them. too much for what you pay for. Yeah, and uh, or not enough for what you pay for. So I, like I don't know, I'm pretty pretty chill that way. I do like good wine though, and I love great food. So right. I got no issues paying thirty bucks for a steak or forty bucks for a steak every once in a while because man, food's worth it. So yeah. I know little things, I guess. But success to me really is like. I get my biggest reward in life when I get an email from a team member who says like, thank you, I've grown here so much uh, because of you know the help that you've given me or because of the environment that is created here. I've had an opportunity to do things in my life I never thought I would be able to do. Like, I'm, I've done the exercise of writing your own epitaph, which is kind of oh, yeah. a morbid exercise, <laughs> but yeah. I'd, I'd recommend it to a lot of people. and 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 then writing a eulogy as if it was a coworker saying it, as a family member saying it, or as a friend saying it. And there's a common theme in everything, and it's about this idea of, like, Rob helped people accomplish things they didn't think they could do on their own, but they did it on their own. Like, this idea of helping people understand that the idea of being what you want to be is a true thing as long as you take the necessary steps to make it happen. Yeah. I. So it's funny you say that, because I'm... I Carly also has me trying to figure out like my personal why and I again it's not that I don't know it like I can feel it but I can't articulate it if that makes any sense I think that's the whole process of the finding your why it, it. it isn't language oriented where it is in your brain right oh that would explain that because it's been a struggle and I'm like man I'm yeah. getting down on myself and she's like no let's just keep you know working at it and it's something that it's like you know fitness is one of the things that as much as it sounds cheesy and I hate when people toss around the term but like it actually made a major change in my life and it's like oh and now I'm just like like even this house stuff, people are like, oh man, you guys have like done so much. Like, how do you know what you're doing? You're kind of just like, we'll go into it optimistically and have like a base of skill set. And if you fail, just like try again. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you say it. So just like, yeah. And it, but That's it's like, and it. I don't always believe that because there's times where I'm like, fuck, like, are we really gonna fit all this in? <laughs> Whether it's a house or this new client or this other struggle, and it's like, well, like we can either try or we cannot try. And like, there's no level below that to make it simpler. That's Yoda, man. And oh yeah, true. Did you do see the quote? Not. I know, I love that. I might steal it for our new location. It's awesome. But part of what gets me going, and maybe why I connect with you guys, is like I want to help people to do a thing that you never thought you could do. I don't care what that thing. Like, I don't care if you want to be like the best dart player in the world. Yeah. 
like cool like let's do that that sounds fun like yeah. if it's important to you it's now important to me that it's important to you even though I might not value the thing that you care about at the same right, way right, right. you do yeah yeah odds are you won't right yeah and it's I don't know have fun doing it that's cool I, I think that's where I'm I feel really lucky at work because I feel like our company's why is like a solid extension of my why of, of why I like to do what we do every day and the idea of being able to like empower our team so that our team can empower our clients so our clients can empower their communities and actually put a dent in this universe because like we're we have this and I mean there's a couple ideas I just go all over the place when I'm thinking about this but first of all defining vision takes a takes time yeah. <laughs> so don't beat yourself up for not having it figured out yet Thank it you. took us 10 years to get it like <laughs> crystallized right <laughs> and so we've got this idea of like how we do business and how we work on purpose literally like purpose is the foundational idea that everything we do is worked on top of and how we use that idea to market for clients and to bring in clients that believe what we believe and that's how we recruit to the labor market to bring team members in to believe what we believe so that way when clients come into the company they've got a message of our purpose and they've got a team of our purpose and they're coming because of the purpose so it's this authenticity that they're going to experience in the whole I'm calling it the uh, authenticity triangle I mean it's a really bad name and for a marketing company it's not super sexy but it is what it is right the way we've drawn it out and so the idea is we want to bring that that idea that concept to businesses in a thousand communities in the world and if we do that and we actually have a thousand businesses in a thousand communities and odds are it'll be more than one thousand be more like you know maybe ten thousand because there's going to be multiple in each community if they bring that idea into the way they do business we're literally going to change the way the world does business that's awesome I love put that. a dent in the universe yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it's another similarity the only thing I can think of that's the closest I have for my personal why is I want to make and verbatim is I want to make a positive contribution to the universe which is awesome and I've got this Einstein poster that's on space and it's um, imagine imagination is more important than knowledge knowledge is limited imagination is limitless and it's like the same type of thing that's like in space that's like I like that and I guess we're trying to do it through fitness which we give people hopefully confidence and then they do something awesome with it versus I guess you guys help them grow their business and they can do awesome, something awesome within the community but it's I don't know it's interesting how that all comes together it's not just like I want to work harder right well fitness is foundational work. to success as far as I'm concerned you know it's it's really interesting like if you uh, Robin Sharma talked about this idea of like Olympic performers and how um, if you look at any Olympic performer they, they have a, a fitness regimen a training regimen they have a rest regimen like there, there's literally sleep and rest in their performance training program yeah. and I think a lot of business people for some reason don't necessarily take lessons out of world-class athletes because there's so much there that's been refined and you can just read a book and have like really cool secrets to how to make yourself better right. but like literally we get paid to rest literally we get paid to exercise because if we're not resting and working out we're not our best self and if we're not our best self then we're a disservice to everybody around us and that's not good for anybody yeah that was, yeah that was, I should uh, what, do you know what book that was from um it's actually in a CD in this CD player so I can I can, I can hook you up with it <laughs> okay. it's, it's an interview I think cool. it's I think it's a success magazine interview so it's Darren Hardy interviewing Robin Sharma cool like Darren that. Hardy's good you'll, you'd like him a lot alright yeah, yeah. Awesome. he did uh, The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster as a book really good and the compound effect also fantastic and I, both very fitting to where you're at oh, cool that sounds good can I flip for a second yeah do whatever that was kind of my entire thing no that's cool so uh, tell me a bit more about the guilt you feel when you're not working <laughs> how personal you want to get on this um, I just feel like so when I first started I'm like so I've got like a personal not vendetta but that's probably the best word I've got for it against like just like mass market garbage produce fitness like there's business of business of business of teaching fitness people to teach fitness people to teach fitness people to teach clients and it's just like layers <laughs> upon layers of like bullshit yeah yeah honestly yeah. it is like it's just I don't know sometimes it works for you but it's like you were the person who like you was gonna work anyways if that makes sense mm -hmm. right? like you didn't have to do anything you're you already had an IQ of 500 like of course you're gonna be successful it just happened to be physics same type of thing with fitness yeah. um, so when I first started this, I was like, man, I want to give people like better quality care. And part of the reason I left Shift is the, the place I was before. Tons of great stuff, but there's other stuff that I felt like was slipping through the cracks. Um, 
And now as we go more and more clients, because he's going to manage four people, like four clients, now we have more than four clients, um, I want to make sure we give like an A plus service to everybody all the time, which is like, like some people are going to need more things at other times and I want to just be like ready in case they need a hand. Like if someone emails me, like I'm usually back to them within like, like if it's 24 hours, I'm like, man, that took me a long time. And, and then I realized like, that's not normal. Like other people don't check their email on the weekends. Like they're okay. And it's like, I think it, the guilt comes from I want to be able to give more to them because I know there's a lot of people who had bad times with fitness and I struggled for six years with injuries and crap and this and that in school as I was like becoming the best version of myself, which is, there's some stuff I don't want to have a camera on there, on camera in there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but I want to like, just like have people just skip those steps. Like that shit sucks. Just skip those steps and go to like the happy part. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if I'm not there to help them that like they're going to have to struggle more, but I know struggle or they're going to have to be unhappy. I know struggle helps you breed success. So it's not that they can't work and we help them put them in positions where they'll be challenged yet succeed. Um, but I feel like I just like have to be available to like answer questions and help. And same with the team. Now that people work for me, like there's people who like, I can't miss payroll. No. Like we have people who there's only money comes from us. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a big deal. Well, I think if you miss that, you can feel guilty. Okay. <laughs> I think that's legit guilt. <laughs> okay. But I mean, I, I just want to learn a bit more about this, um, the guilt on, you know, taking some time off, um, and not being on 24 seven. So like, for me, and I think this is similar, I'm not sure if it's the same completely, but I feel like it's similar. So like for me, I have a work reward trash in my mind. Like I can't waste time unless I invest time first. So I gotta do something like clean the kitchen or mow the lawn or I don't know, build the deck or put up the playground set, whatever it is. I gotta get something accomplished, paint the doors. Then I can go play. Yeah. So I'm. I'm, I'm with you. I, I can't go play first if shit's got to get done. I'm like, man, I should be doing that right now, and I should on myself a little bit. Yeah, I, I definitely feel the same way. So, uh, and that, I think that came from when I was a kid, like um, this idea of you have to do your chores before you can go out on, on Saturdays at my house. Anyway, there was this idea that you had to clean, you had to do your chores before you before you could go out and play with your friends. Right. And I hated it, and I would procrastinate doing my chores, and I wouldn't be able to go out, and all I had to do was just do my chores, and then it would all be done. Yeah, which probably took 30 minutes if you actually did them. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'd be done at like three in the afternoon, <laughs> because I was just like, I didn't want to do it, and it was just, it was stupid behavior, but I mean, I was a kid, whatever. But I feel like it kind of stayed with me a little bit. Now I'm way yeah. more disciplined, I'm way more adult-oriented, so I, I get my shit done, and then I go and play. But I still feel a little bit of guilt when I'm not doing what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. Like I've, I've, and this is something that I think a lot of business people go through, especially in a growing company. Like we're at 26 people, right? So it's a bit of a different beast. <laughs> yeah. But there, I'll never be done. Right. I'll never be done. Is that frustrating? It used to be. No. I used to have to-do lists that I would just complete. I'd be, I'd be like, I'm done. Like, let's go Monday. Like I'm ready. Like I got nothing but attack happening right now. <laughs> um, but now I'm in, you know, okay, I got to schedule my attack time. I got to schedule my response time. I got to schedule my family time. I got to schedule my me time. And I'm a big fan of your calendar is an indication of what's important in your life. And I know a lot of people that only have their work stuff in their calendar. But for me, I started putting play time in my calendar, family time in my calendar, date night in my calendar, like right. kid time in my calendar. So that way it was what I was supposed to do. It was my rational strategic self saying to me, next Saturday, you're doing this. This is what you're meant to be doing. It's a good idea for you to do this. You wouldn't miss a client appointment, don't miss a kid appointment. Not, never. So that made me guilt free. Cause I was like, I'm planning to do this as opposed to I'm just not doing what I'm supposed to be doing right Or I could do this other thing. Right. So there's one more thing. And there's yeah. always one more thing, especially now. Now that we're, you know, we're growing. Yeah. I'm, I'm never done. So do you have like ratios? So that's actually is nice. Do you like the things you do personally to help you, you know, law of the lid, if we're going to go back to that, like the things you do personally to manage yourself really well. I've only recently started to put some family stuff in there, but it's not a lot. I just like don't schedule stuff on weekends, but I could just put family in there. Do you try to make like, like red is work and green is family and try to have them 50, 50 or like, I don't have it down to a science for sure. No, I definitely don't. Um, Saturdays are family days. 
like straight up unless there's like a fundraiser or a community event that I'm gonna like right. try to bring my family to yeah um, Saturdays are family days Sunday I probably work you know two to three hours um, and then right now with three kids under three at home I'm doing uh, one night away during the week and then I'm at home for dinner four nights of the week right and then I'm working at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock for an hour or something like that yeah yeah or half an hour for five minutes a night that kind of stuff but uh, you know I don't, I don't know I don't have it as science I know that I have to make time for Megs and I and yeah. um, I really enjoy my car rides to and from work because it's kind of like my time and I love driving so I, I think that's the, that's kind of the balance that I, I'm at right now and it shifts right like I mean as as uh, the kids get older and that kind of stuff things are going to change but I don't have it down to any ratios or science like I'm going to maintain this ratio right yeah some, pe some people are just like oh yeah it's this and other people like I kind of feel it out yeah I mean I'm a bit more of a feel it out kind of week to week I try to advance, plan stuff in advance as much as I can because if stuff's planned in advance I, it's easy for me to say no to things yeah. oh yeah I'm supposed to be doing this so I guess I'll do that if it, like if I mean, literally, my weekends, for the most part, are completely locked in for the summer, and half of them are home, like planned home. So people are like, hey, man, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, I'm at home. That's what I'm doing. I'm hanging out with my kids, hanging out with my family. I'm boat. I like the, like the simplicity of that, like just doing this thing. That's what I'm Actually, doing. I'm going to start planning my weekends there. It made a huge difference for me, and it made it so I was guilt-free. Like, honestly, I struggled with that idea of I should be doing other things all the time until I started scheduling the things that I needed to be doing outside of work stuff and it's with that idea that we get paid to be recreational we get paid to sleep we get paid to have fun because if we don't do that stuff we're not going to be our best self and then it's no good for anybody right then that quality of work is medium at best yeah and medium is shit <laughs> yeah 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 we need to be a plus back to my original thing I need to be a plus or want to be a plus I want to do a good job yeah I think some of it for me comes from like parents stuff like my parents both had very high expectations. Like, my mom was a PhD, and my dad's highly educated and paid, like, every penny himself. Like, his parents wouldn't, like, give him food or anything. Even, like, my mom was like, I met him, and I was sewing his socks for him because he had no money, and he was eating spaghetti with plain pasta sauce every meal or something. Like, it was, like, as bad as you can make it up. That was his reality. Um, and I've just, like, kind of wanted to do stuff, but I've never been as academic as either of them were. Right. Um, and I think part of it, too, was, you know, Liam being... You know, it's a blessing in disguise, but at the time I didn't realize that. Um, being interjected in my life at a very challenging point where I was like, I was part way through school. I was basically like an alcoholic for most of school. If I wasn't in the gym, I was sometimes in class, I was usually drinking. And like, it wasn't like, I didn't make intelligent, responsible choices by any means. I didn't do anything like to malicious, but I was just like generally dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like every other university kid. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I but I had a six month old. Right. Which was like all of a sudden I'm like, fuck, maybe I should maybe maybe I shouldn't be drunk on Wednesday night. <laughs> maybe I should be being a dad. And I like really struggled with that for a long time and now and we've been fortunate that I think starting the business on like my eighth year of being in fitness after like, you know, not just like working forty hours a week, like being obsessed. Um like skipping school to go to seminars in Chicago that we could barely afford because we wanted to see this one presenter that we've been following for three years on the internet. Yeah, that's like, awesome though, right? We were invested in it. Um, means we were able to like be profitable pretty soon and like quality isn't as big of a like, concern. Like we've already been doing a good job for years, now we just have a different brand on the front door. Right. Um, but having Liam sooner was like, I was kind of struggling with two lives and this is where Carly's helping me like kind of align them on the same path. Um, but I've also been like the breadwinner for, well, ever with Cadia, where it's something where I'm like, if I'm not working more, I could be doing this thing to make things better, improve retention or improve sales or all that stuff that like, you know, what if we're not able to stay st stable and then I can't be dad. And my version of, I guess, being dad has been like providing for the family, but in all aspects except my presence. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because if you're not there, you're working on making it so that they're provided for. Yeah, it's not like I'm out like not out drinking or like with buddies right. very often or whatever yeah. it's like I'm working or at home and it's it used to be 90 10 and now it's like 75 25 and I think it could be a little bit better because even when at home you know sometimes you're like thinking about that project and you're like oh crap I should be I let me just check this email and like no don't if the kids are up be present 
Yeah. That was the one thing that this one guy told me, Steve Barrett. Steve, you're a rock star. Thank you so much for being a mentor over the last couple of years. Um, but he said that kind of right off the get-go when I met him. I told him I was having a kid, and he just said, you know, there's one piece of advice I've I got. I know you didn't ask, but here it is. When you're with your kids, be present. You know, don't read the newspaper. Don't watch TV. Don't put the sports game on unless you're watching it with them. Right. Like, be present. Get off your phone. And then it was interesting because I was with um, my aunt, and she has... Uh, she's like an early childhood educator, like certificates of the yin yang, tons of experience. And she talks about this common issue where parents will talk about, tell stories about how they gave their phone to their kid to play with, and then the kid smashed it, like deliberately broke it. And um, she said it's a phenomenon that's happening all over the world right now. It's because kids perceive the phones as more important than them. Right. It's like when they push their brother who's a newborn because they don't, they don't feel important anymore. You got it. So we are just moved into this new house, and it's a complete construction site, and like. We don't have internet, let alone, like, we don't, the only appliance that works is, is a fridge. Yeah. We don't have anything. It's just a construction site. And, <laughs> and you live there. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. We wear, wear shoes in the house. We don't know where anything is. And we're just kind of, like, dealing with... The lessons I've been learning are, one, I need way less to be happy, and I'm not even that materialistic. Like, I wear I have five of the same polo, and I just rotate them through the week. <laughs> um, but, but, like, I don't know where half my stuff is, and then, like, I guess I don't need that thing anymore. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's no longer a value add to my life. But the second thing is we don't have internet, so Liam can't easily watch, like, shows and shit. Yeah. So last night, Caddy is studying for uh, her real estate test, and I've got Liam for the evening, and me and Liam were fixing the bathroom floor and part of the wall, and, like, we're actually spending, like, quality time together there where neither of us, like, I don't, I didn't check my computer for four days over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I was off, and I'm like, that was the best, and now I'm like, maybe we should not get internet, but I know that probably wouldn't work long term. Right. But it, like, it clicked that I'm like, this is way better. Like, me and Liam doing this thing, he was helping. Like, yeah. helping. Yeah, 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 It was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. way better, and I was way it more present. It took you present. twice as long to do it. He yeah. was helping. I was up an hour and a half past my bedtime <laughs> because he was helping, but yeah. it felt awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, there's been some rewards. Carly's been instrumental. Thank you, Carly. I hope you watch this. Woo. Um, She's a But chat. trying to, like, to balance those two, but it's like, what does your income need to be, and how can you be there for your team, and what are your... You know, what do your clients actually need? Like, if we work together, and whether I hire you or you hire me to do our respective jobs, like, maybe I don't need a touch point once a week. Maybe I just need to know, like, hey, on Fridays I can email Rob and he'll get back to me soon because I have a question about my marketing. Sure. Maybe, like, maybe I just don't need to be present for it 24-7. I need to figure out, like, what are, like, the top three things clients care about based on we should just survey them. And, yeah. And then those are the things we're going to do, and everything else will be longer to get back to you on. That's cool. Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing that... Um, we've had to work through as a team and we still work through it is where's the highest leverage of value in terms of how can we maintain a sustainable successful business while providing the most value to our clients and that's a really interesting question because we have to maintain profitability right and we have to maintain customer value so what's the highest leverage points to do that and where can we let go of some stuff and where can we focus on and you know, it's it mean it does. It, at the end of the day, it means we're not doing everything for everybody. We fo- we're yeah. focusing on some core things that people like, and really drilling it home, and then doing the basics well. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyway. Cool. No, that's a good. That's a very good point. Because there's some stuff we've recently introduced online booking, and we're now just trying to like. It's been a process because we didn't. We should have just always had it. I should have paid extra for the software, but just to be like, yeah, if you need to cancel, just go online. That used to be like a full-time job answering emails. Oh, and coordinating everything. Like for schedule, and now I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, can you go online and change your schedule? And they're like, okay, sure. Perfect. I'm like, so instead of me paying someone to answer emails, however much that was a lot, like a minute, yeah. I'll just pay 20 bucks extra a month of online booking. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, anyways, same thing though, it's a value, it was actually a value add for them to be able to do it themselves, and I thought it was a value add for me being like, let me do the thing. Full service. I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we tend to undervalue our service and over deliver on it. So we underprice and we deliver too much. Right. Where, whereas if we were to just make some clear expectations about here's what we're going to do and here's what you can expect to have happen, and we're going to work on that all the time. Yeah. And then every once in a while, maybe you throw in a delightful moment here and there. I think people will be really happy. Yeah, and if they were pissed off about something that wasn't an expectation, it's like, we never said we were going to do that. Like, yeah, let's talk about why you're upset about it and see what we can do to make it better. Yeah. But anyway, there's lots of stuff in there. This is the longest one I've done, 40 minutes. Holy shit. Sorry. I don't think anybody's going to watch at this part of it, so what the <laughs> fuck? We can swear up a blue streak. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, this, that was great. This was fun. Yeah, that was a ton of fun. Thanks for the drive. All right, yeah. if you are watching, thanks. See you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>